This is the book of Jude, verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise power of our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, so be it. Giving all praises and honor and all glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Bucha, Chodash. A double honor to my teacher, the apostles, the elders, and the bishops of Great Millstone, who watch over our souls, shall warm to the Yakim who are sincere and serious in doing the will of Yahweh. Bahasham Yahushai, Bahasham Bukha Kodash, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. To you all, stay strong and stay mighty. Yes, I'm the brother that he said, Pokosha Banyame from the Brown Chain, Great Millstone Barbados. I got a series of clips here I can play regarding um, the, banana, the banana people. Right? The banana people. So this bear me, it, they're not in, in, they're in any order. Right, um, cause the brothers that the brother put it up, he just took it. Um, while he was watching the video, he just took them, you know. So they didn't, they didn't, they didn't order they didn't any order, but you get the point. Attention completely to Central America, where they know bananas could grow abundantly, and where oh look at this, the U.S. is thinking about making a little canal that cuts through this little narrow strip of land. So the United Fruit Company is like, that's kind of a nice perk for the region. If anything goes wrong, the U.S. could have our backs. Foreshadowing? Am I foreshadowing? I'm foreshadowing. So yeah, United Fruit Company is like this region, Central America, looks like a great neighborhood to control the supply chain. They wanted to control the people who worked on the farm by owning their basic survival needs. They wanted to control the houses they lived in and the stores they shopped in and what they could buy. They wanted to control the transportation by building railways so that they could quickly ship their product onto ports. They wanted to control the boats and the waterways so that they could get all of these bananas from Central America to the US before they spoiled. They started with Guatemala pouring tons of investment. Soon, they were the largest company in Guatemala. They owned a fifth of the farmable land in the country. They owned all of the railways and all of the radio stations and radio infrastructure. And by 1901, the government of Guatemala actually hired the United Fruit Company to manage the country's postal service. What? United Fruit was starting to look a lot like a government, and the result was a lot of happy, banana-eating Americans. So they kept going. They kept expanding their operations across Central America. So now with all of this beautiful infrastructure and trains and land, the next strategy for making bananas even more profitable was, you guessed it, paying the workers next to nothing. Oh, and paying them not with real money. A lot of the times, United Fruit paid their workers in vouchers. These vouchers could only be used in designated United Fruit commissaries. So they're not actually want to run their own country. How dare they? They have to remember that at this time, the U.S. was starting to get really comfortable with empire behavior. And Central America was at the top of the priority list. The banana companies knew this, which allowed them to feel emboldened to just sort of do whatever they wanted in the region. Okay, but this is sort of child's play. It started to get a lot worse in the 1920s. There was a situation in Colombia where a bunch of workers for the United Fruit Company decided to stop working and protest their working conditions. They were asking for a few things like, I don't know, working six days a week instead of seven or getting paid real money. The United Fruit Company refuses to negotiate with them and instead goes to the US and says, hey USA, We've got these really annoying workers who are like trying to unionize and trying to get paid and stuff. And it actually smells a lot like communism. And the US threatens to invade with their Marines and squash this strike if the Colombian military doesn't do something first. Reminder that we're not talking about some big political revolution or rebellion. We're talking about a few workers in a banana plantation protesting for more humane conditions. And yet, this was a priority for the U.S. government 
to put pressure on Colombia to fix the situation. Of course, Colombia didn't want to make the U.S. angry, so they responded and sent in their own troops to go put down this workers' strike, and they were ordered to, quote, spare no ammunition. So on December 5th, 1928, these protesters are in the town square in this town in Colombia, and the Colombian army shows up and massacres them. Men, women, and children were killed by their own military, all because an American banana company didn't want to pay them a decent wage. I mean, this is that these large geopolitical forces were coming to bear over a banana plantation. This event is called the Banana Massacre. This didn't stop in 1928. Fast forward to Guatemala in the 1950s. At this point, the United Fruit Company, El Pulpo, is making major profits. They own almost 50% of the land in Guatemala, tax-free. But this president, Jacobo Arbenz, who was democratically elected, is trying to change things. He wants to take land that United Fruit owns but isn't using and redistribute it to poor Guatemalans. He's sort of doing like a Robin Hood thing, trying to like lift poor Guatemalans out of poverty. But of course, United Fruit didn't like this. But instead of engaging directly with the Guatemalan government, United Fruit goes to the White House and says those magic words again, communism. United Fruit then hired this PR magician, who happened to be Sigmund Freud's nephew, and he worked with news that linked Arbenz, the president of Guatemala, to communism. Completely fake news. And, and not just like using that word lightly, like he created a fake Guatemalan newspaper, created all these fake reports, and then distributed those fake newspapers to Congress. He planted the seeds in their minds that the United Fruit Company were the good guys and that Arbenz, the democratically elected leader, needed to go because of communism. It totally worked. President Eisenhower, the president of the United States, believed all of this. And he sent in the CIA to get Arbenz out of power, to protect the banana people once again. So it's a classic CIA coup. They go find a bunch of rebels, they give them money, and they train them. Rose to oust Guatemala's red infiltrated government. They find a leader who wants to be the next president that's friendly to the U.S., and eventually they start broadcasting anti-government propaganda, and they turn Guatemalans against their government with all of this fake news and propaganda. <laughs> And then with these trained fighters, they go take over the government, the Guatemalan army surrenders, and the leader of the rebels becomes the new president, friendly to the United States. And now the banana companies are happy, and they have a guy in power that is their guy. It's like, it's like a, they have a playbook on how to like mess with democracies around the world, and they just sort of followed the playbook. They're like, oh, we, we've done this before. We're going to do it again in Iran in a little bit. Like This is like classic classic CIA coup. By the way, this coup was sort of a death blow to democracy in Guatemala. It divided and destroyed the budding civil society that has not allowed Guatemala to recover since. All because these banana companies wanted to control the supply chain. These things leave scars, major scars, major marks on a country. Scars that are still felt today. Okay, let's... let's... Yeah, so... You watch all the clips. So this one get a series of precepts to go with um, those clips to show you how uh, Esau Edom has oppressed the people. How he has made their, their, their lives uh, bitter and hard, you know. That's right. Guatemala to Panama. Uh, that's what, um, that is the tribe of, um, so like your man. I forget the Troy man, so like your man, beer man, huh? But Micah 2 and 1, woe to them that devise iniquity and wrote evil upon their beds when the morning is light. They practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Right. So when the morning is light, they practice it. They're practicing the, 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 the evil intentions. And as you saw in the clips, nothing but oppressing oppression from Esau Edom. It shows you people are the tribes, you, you, you Guatemala to Panamanians, right? That's right. Zebulon, which in the Hebrew means Zabal, Zabala 1, 
which means dwelling, right? Um, there is controversy with the twelve tribes chart. All you gotta do is read Ezekiel thirty-seven and Genesis forty-nine, Revelation the seventh chapter. And you know, there's a book called um, Lost Tribes of the Indians by James Adair, and they practice the same customs that are in the scriptures, man. You see? So you go back, verse two, and they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Right. And you saw in those clips, man, the various clips. Oh, he saw Edom. Has oppressed the poor, wait, that's a preset wait a minute, man. Oppressed the poor, wait a minute. And then what he did for rages, he gave them vouchers, be. And what the vouchers could only be used at one of their establishments, big man. <laughs> right, right, right. And I want you to know it's going to be the same thing with this karagma. You know what I mean? If you've got the karagma, um, you can't participate in their society. It's just plain as there. Job 20 verse 19. Because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor, because he have violently taken away an house which he builded not. And what comes with a house? Resources, man. To sustain that house. To sustain that community. To sustain a livelihood, man. Now, banana is my favorite fruit. You could, you could record that, Esau, Edom, you know. Banana is my favorite fruit. Is that? Ezekiel 18 and 12. He, so, so, so like here. Yeah, Ezekiel 18. Let me get verse 11. Let me get to um whoa. This this is all me here, boy. Verse five. But if a man be just, I do that which is lawful and right. Now we all know who ain't just. He saw Edom is not just. But let me continue. And have not eaten up the mountains. How I many eating up the mountains? You 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 know there's a scripture that says um um. If thieves come, but they're not gathering enough, but you have reaped everything. So Esau Edom just comes and, 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 and takes everything, big man. All the resources that land produces, right? And have not eaten up the mountains, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. Neither have defiled his neighbor's wife, neither have come near to a menstruous woman. And have not oppressed any, but have restored to the depth of his pledge. Have spoiled none by violence, have given his bread to the hungry, and have covered the naked before garment. Did Esau, has Esau Edom done this? He that have not given forth upon usury, neither have taken any increase, that have withdrawn his hand from iniquity, have executed true judgment between man and man, have walked in my statutes, and have kept my judgments. To deal truly, he is just, he shall surely live, save the law of power. Was, was Esau, has Esau in a war in the law statues? No, even when he was king, what did he bring? He brought the first slings of, of uh, fruit. You're supposed to bring uh, um, first slings of the flock, big man. So even back then, he didn't want to take heed to the Lord's ways, man. So you think he's doing it now? No, look at the earth today. The laws of the Heavenly Father are perfect. Even there's a land Sabbath. You, you work the land for six years. On the seventh year, you leave the land alone. Let it give the land time to heal itself. Wherever fruit remains on that land, the poor will come and take the fruit. In that way, everybody survives. You know what I mean? Everything is fertile and fresh, me. But not Esau Edom. He must dig and reap. Dig and reap. And murder and kill and rob. 
verse 10, if he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, yeah, and, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even have eaten up, but even have eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, have oppressed the poor and needy, have spoiled by violence, have not restored the pledge, and have lifted up his eyes to the idols, have committed abomination. So we know he saw Edom these with idol worship heavy, Isaiah 47 on down. You yes, see? Have given forth upon usury, and have taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He have done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. And this is plain, big man. You see? This is plain. You see? No, the one in, in, in James, right? The wages of the hired laborer. That's what, James? That's James. Let me see. That's James 5. I think that's James 5. Let me see. Wait a minute. Um, all right, let me read. Yeah, James 5 and 1. Go to know ye rich men. Weep and hold for your misery that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Corrupted how? The way you got them, big man. But there's a you and uh, there's a preacher that says, um, if you got riches, boy, boy, violent. How does it go, boy? So like your man. But if anybody know it, they can put it in the comment section, man. But he that got the riches, boy, the see if you get how it goes, man. I got the internet. I can go from Google right now. You see, your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now we all know gold and silver don't rust. Right? So the rust of them meaning what? When you see when you see rust or metal, you know that the metal is um, um deteriorating. You know what I mean? By the time you see rust, you know all right, I gotta do something with this metal here. So there's a metaphor for the rust of them the the, the everything you had hidden is, is is being shown before you now, big man. But once you see rust, you know I gotta act on it quick, right? So all the Esau Edom's hidden agenda is is, is 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 coming out now, big man. The rust of them, the witness of them now, right? Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. See, gain of vultures, big man. Cryeth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath Oath. Hey, so you know, you know judgment can come, boy. You know judgment can come, big man. When the money get paid, big man, and he works so damn hard, and he complain, he, he start to complain and cry out. You know what can happen, boy. Lord can hear that man, yeah? Or that woman, yeah? I think that's a precept too, boy. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton, yeah, undisciplined, man. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you, yeah, meaning fight you. You see? So, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be uh, um, a recompense. For everything you've done on the earth, you saw Edom. You know what I mean? Real thing. So, yeah, I just want to do this short video, man. You know what I mean? Or you tribes. What happened to you tribes there in Guatemala? Zebulon. Zabala 1 in the Hebrew. Which means dwelling. Judah is the... Is Yahawada. Yahawada times. Benjamin. Banyamian. Son of the right. Levi. Lawyer. Haitians. Ephraim. Aparium. I am fruitful. Manasseh. Manasha, made to forget, Simeon, Shemaiwan, affliction heard, Zebulon, Zabalawan, dwelling, God, troop, God, Reuben, Raabon, uh, see as a son, Asha, Asha, happy, Ishaka, Yashashka, uh, he is heard, Naphtali, Napatalwa, which means wrestling, you see? 
So yeah, man, this one do this short video called Halal. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Mukha Khodash. Shalom.